Hey, hey, what is going on, y'all? This is Rick Ritchie, and we are with NASM right now doing a live session on Facebook. And I want to say shout out to everybody who is tuning in. Today's topic is going to be on staying healthy and hopeful during the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, we've got a pandemic going on, and I thought, let me reach out to one of the most absolutely positive people that I've ever met in my entire life. So a uh, dear friend of mine, Brian Newen is here. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's going on, Rick Ritchie? Thanks for having me, brother. And uh, what an amazing compliment that is. And it, it, I got to say, it takes one to know one. So uh, you got that in spades, too, brother. I don't know anybody else that's more positive uh, on my end. So thanks very much for the kind words. Thanks for having me. Oh, dude, thank you so much. Well, you know, what's funny is that uh, it wasn't too long ago, but uh, I went to a conference. It was the NASM Optima conference last year, and I, it was my first time sitting in on one of your sessions. And, and it was funny to me because at some point I was like, this is no longer the topic of what this session is about. <laughs> and it had gone into this like life coaching wellness thing. And after it was over, I was like, hey, it was it was good. You spent half the time talking about what you said you were going to spend, and the other half of the time was was on like this life changing, inspiring, enlightening uh, moment. And you said, I think it's because of the energy in the room. Everybody after three days of a conference and one of the last sessions of the day was feeling low, and you needed to give them something special. And and you did. I was beside myself, brother. So. Oh. Uh, that's one of the reasons I was like, this is the guy who has to be on this one. <laughs> oh, man, I, thank you so much, Rick. I, you know, I appreciate that. I, um, I, for those of you guys that don't know, I think a lot of my background come from that side of, you know, you got to get tough when the tough get going. Um, I, I spent six seasons in the NFL with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that was, you know, being under Coach Tom Coughlin, that was one of the things, you know, you got to be tough. You know, there's the, the times get tough. You got to get tough. And I, now times are getting tough again. And it was like that third day of Optima, like you mentioned. It's a tough thing to present in front of a crowd that's just beat, tired, and completely full. And I think some this is the time when I don't know if my exterior is that tough. You know, I'm five foot nothing, and I weigh a buck 35 wet. So, you know, I, I don't, tough was never really my thing, but I think being tender at this time and really having that sense of compassion um, instead of like that hardcore courage kind of thing, you know, this is the, this is the time you need to be in that space to, to respond, you know, to help people. And a lot of that starts with just how things are with yourself and how you feel. Uh, when I stood up in that room, I could feel the energy of how people were tired. They didn't want more. I wasn't just going to start throwing information. Hey, you got to listen up. You know, it's it is a time to sit back, actually just be present and listen and be a part of it. It's you know, we I think we are at co as coaches want to be at the forefront of fixing and fixing and fixing. And I don't know if that's necessarily what we need right now. I think right now is a, a time to listen and reflect and throw some smiles into the crowd do what you can to help people have a brighter day and I, that's why i le really loved and this this idea you had you know when you you brought this up to me i'm like this is uh, exactly what we need to hear you know is that side of you are enough to make a change yeah hey listen brother i know that there are some people out there saying it is really easy to be positive when everything's going your way right mm -hmm. um, and um, and I know from talking to you earlier that you are doing the best you can staying positive during this time because you're the guy that 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 does wear the rose tinted glasses and finds the silver lining. Um, but is that the case? Is everything just going your way right now? Um, or are there other things going on in life that that are challenging and you are still being this ray of sunshine for people? Yes. Uh, at the heart of who I am, I decided uh, that, you know, or my soul has decided that I'm a healer in this world. You know, there's a reason why sports medicine was attractive to me. There's a reason why being an athletic trainer and standing on the sidelines uh, was important to me. There was a reason why opening up a gym and helping people live a better life was important to me because in and of itself, if you're a real coach in this world, whether it be health, whether it be nutrition, whether it be mental health, if you're there 
to be in someone's corner, then first and foremost, you need to be in your own corner. And when you stop and you look around and you realize that this isn't a, just a big positive thing. For me personally, I'm swimming in a, in a sea of what would be considered to the ego. This is kind of crappy right now. You know, my stepdad is on the verge of, of his last, he's basically on his last chapter with, with uh, dementia and he is now being hospice at the house and my mom who's four foot ten who can't you know lift him up and no longer has that help coming because of all of this spatial distancing you know that's that's troublesome at the house and now my brother who is normally taking care of them he came down with the coronavirus two weeks ago and so he is still recovering in san jose and can't offer that help but that's another stressor i have you know with him calling me telling me is short of breath and here's my you know my younger brother i can, i don't want to see him go down like this but that's another part of it you know my kids are in the house as well and that's that's a whole i mean there's so many people in that arena you know it's like am i parenting the right way there's so many things that in my head i could say oh my god it's way too much i can't handle it I can't even do this for myself and then let alone all the clients and then all of the other expenses that I, there's so many things, but, uh, you, you stop. And I say to myself, what did I come to this experience for? I came here to heal people. I came here to, to be a source of help when I can. But right now, if I can't help myself, how can I really help anybody else? And so that's a lot of this time where I'm spending is how am I helping myself and my family? How am I being the best foundational piece of whether it be father, whether it be my, whether it be amazing husband, whether it be just uh, another coach to, or another mentor to some, to somebody you were mentoring, whatever it is, those energy pieces all exist. It's whether or not you that's how you want to handle them and who you are to yourself so this is just a real big time to go within i feel I, you know this is just that aspect of who are you at the heart of it ask yourself that who are you during this time who are you before all of this happened and are you still that same person are you still doing the things that match that uh that designation you've given yourself for me as a healer am i still healing yeah Absolutely. If I'm taking care of myself and that's the person who takes, then I am. I need to do that for myself now so I can be that strength for someone else later. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. And uh, I'm sorry to hear you got so many things going on and uh, we're all being affected. I'm in New York City, so yeah. I'm at the epicenter of the coronavirus right now. Um, we just got my son's test back, so it was negative. Uh, we thought for an entire six days as he was hacking away and got a negative on his uh, flu and on his strep that it was going to be Corona. So in, in some ways, we're, you know, we're very happy that that's not what it is. And in other ways, we're like, man, if it was Corona and he was starting to feel better, we wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So now whatever he had, we still got to worry about Corona right now. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're being positive even without that's what it was. You know, we, my parents were like, come and visit us. And we we're like, mom, we can't, like, you're who we're trying to protect. Yeah. Right. We can't come and visit you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, we're on an extended sabbatical at this time, as are many people in the planet right now. Um, in this country, we're really, really dealing with it. Um, I'm going to just go through a couple of things that, that I'm doing and then just run through some stuff. And then what I'd like to do after that is, uh, we'll reach out to Facebook and um, and Greg is our producer here and he's going to be uh, taking some of those questions and reading them out to us that people will have for us. But um, here's one of the things that, that we started doing in our family. The first week, uh, it was like, it was like, let's just lounge and, you know, for me to let me let me watch Netflix and Amazon Prime and I, I don't get the opportunity to do things like that. Yeah. And then week two came around and I was like, no more, right? Like, I just have to do stuff. So one of the things that we've done um, with the kids, and they've got school, and helping them with school is one thing, um, uh, more challenging than many of the things that, that's going on right now. Um, but we've been putting together workout programs, and 
uh, I've got kind of a template that we go through and I'll, I'll go back to the template, but I like starting off with, you know, what exercise do you want to do? And it's, it's become this kind of thing where the kids will not do an exercise at all. They just kind of, they do this and all the kids look at it and they go, yeah, and they'll do the same kind of weird, funny thing. And they try to come up with which one is the goofiest. And, you know, that's, that's our warm up. That's how we kind of prep and then we'll get into standard stuff. But, you know, we're, we're trying to stay positive and uh, it, it can be challenging here, but we're doing a couple of things. You know, exercise is a coping mechanism yeah. for many of us. And uh, when things don't go right, when we get frustrated, when we get upset, when we get angry, when we are hurt, um, we tend to, as fitness professionals, we, we like to go to the gym or we like to go for a run or we like to do things like that. And um, uh, that that's become challenging in many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't have those coping mechanisms where they come to us as fitness professionals. Yeah. So um, one of the things that you said, which I find is really, really valuable is um, I had a conversation just recently with Dr. Rachel Goldman, who's a, a psychotherapist and associate clinical professor at NYU uh, in the psychi uh, psychology department. And she said there should be coping mechanisms and it, exercise is a big one. You know, find a couple of external ones, but you have to find an internal one too. And mm -hmm. like you said, we gotta go within. So yeah. there are some of these moments where we gotta take to ourselves and, and go into meditation, like go into prayer, go into deep thought, go into pontification of what is happening and how can I contribute, how can I help, uh, what is my direction, what is my purpose. And that's, that's something that now during this time, because all of our other external coping mechanisms are being deleted and pulled from us. Yeah. So it yeah. is time to switch to something that's internal. So what are some of the things that you're doing, brother, to, to stay I, positive? Just kind of going off what you said, it's tough, you're right. You know, when you're so used to giving people amazing workouts and giving them the high fives and all of a sudden you're like, you know, you're you're Tony Stark. And it's like if you're if you're nothing without the suit, right, okay. then who you are, who are you really at the heart of it? And it is absolutely one of my biggest beliefs is – you know, we in the coaching industry, we still want to take care of our coaches. We want to take care of our clients. And in that head, we say, okay, well, if I if I'm gonna keep my clients moving and get them to their goals for this coming summer, I gotta get them from point A to point B, right? And that's kind of like that coaching mentality. I gotta bring them along this this horizontal plane of success. And now that we're in our homes and secluded, now more than ever do we have to dig deep into the soul, in the heart, the mind, the, the heart, and take each other not on a horizontal plane, but a vertical plane, a vertical dimension, you know, where people are, you're helping people create buy-in to themselves. You know, they, there are so many of these nutrition, um, I mean, so many different diets to follow, but I don't know if any certain diet actually works, but don't, isn't it so that different diets create a change in your relationship with food. And now that we have different movement things happening, this is, will obviously create a, a change to our relationship to movement and strength. So being so trapped, who knows what the silver line could be once this is all, we'll be back in the parks again, we'll be playing. You know, we just like get out. Nobody wants to be in the house anymore. I've been on Netflix, I saw everything. It's time for me to play. So we can't really be the one to, to say, oh, this is exactly how it's going to be right now. It is just so important to be in the space of being okay with the mess, right? And, um, and man, that's, that's absolutely perfect. I think what you talked about, uh, Rick, is just who are we at the heart of it if we don't have the other stuff? And getting into that mind, for me, is journaling. Like, I have a typewriter, a 1930s typewriter, chicka, 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 chicka. But oh, really? it is my go-to. He is my, he is the representation of uh, of hope for me. I guess uh, you know of of I can just vent into my typewriter, and for some reason he speaks back the truth to me. And when I type this morning, you know, getting out what I want to say, the the biggest word was just authenticity. I I don't know what had come up, but. It's that stroke of who, you know, who are you at without all of the med balls, without all the kettlebells, without all of the, I already have online programs that, who are you? Does this change who you are? And if it doesn't, 
or you, it's important to write that down. How does it change you or how does it not? That's that's what I mean by that that typewriter, that journaling. That's just one aspect. You had mentioned meditation. Those are great guided meditations. Um, I personally still have a life coach, someone that, you know, I'm I I I talk to on a monthly basis so that I can have that conversation who I can come up with my my issues with. And that's part of all of this uneasiness right now is at, at some point in time, it does get old to numb ourselves in Netflix. It does get old to numb ourselves and and sitting in the discomfort of not moving or sitting in the discomfort of not really going within to really meet your fears head on, to, to, t- to talk to your spouse about what scares you right now. It's amazing, you know, like what family talks of just telling each other how you feel and we are being forced to do it now more than ever. And the thing is not to fight it, but to embrace it. I love that, brother, thank you. Um, let's take a, a moment just to, to interact with some of the people. Um, dude, that was so special, thank you for that. That means a lot. Man, uh, thank you, man. I, let's go with uh, Greg, brother. Do you have some? Uh, are there any questions out there that that some people may have for us? Yeah, Connor Webster on the chat is wondering uh, what's a good exercise to improve posture. Obviously, a lot of people at home sitting in chairs they're not used to. Uh, what's something that you can do at home to try to improve that posture? I think it's a great I have question. Go to you, so. Huh? Yeah. So here's one of the things that I just want to bring up regarding that question. Um, and my answer is right now there's um, we understand that there's a strong correlation. So a, a, a psychosocial correlation between posture and what's going on in our lives. And there are a lot of people that are hurting right now. Uh, some people are sick. Some people uh, have family that is dying or has died from this COVID-19. Um you know, so I don't want to downplay that we are trying to be positive in light of some people's real hurt right now. Mm-hmm. But some of the things that I want to talk about uh, with this is that, you know, there's a there's a lot of hurt right now. And when we are hurt, when we're sad, our countenance and our face changes, but so does our posture. Yeah. We do tend to shrug up. We do tend to drop our shoulders and forward our head and round our back. Um, so one of the things is just be conscious of that. Um, we're not necessarily at this moment talking about, you know, these are short, tight, overactive muscles is what you release and then, then what you statically stretch. And then we're going to provide activation exercises, um, less about that right now and more about, um, understanding what's going on and being aware of it. And your body language can be a great indicator of what's going on psychosocially as well. I noticed that, um, if you think about it, even with exercises like a plank, Right. Think about a plank and you could look down and notice that your fists are being held so tight, but your hands don't hold you up in a plank. And yet there you are holding on to it because there's stress being put onto your body. And so what we try to do is say, relax your hands. And we know that relaxing the hands allows for more of a systemic relaxation. So the muscles that need to work work and the muscles that are just have nothing to do with this exercise and yet are completely latching on as if they are the ones doing the exercise can relax. And the same thing goes with stress. I notice when we're stressed, the way that we hold ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, and what short type overactive for me, uh, Brian, you can go into whatever you want to, but for me right now, it's about dealing with um, the psychosocial components of what's going on and how our posture is affected by that. Absolutely. I'm just piggybacking off of what you said. It is absolutely uh, an attitude. You know, posture is an attitude. You get that into that upper cross syndrome, that slouch, that I'm down kind of thing. And you can stay there in that space. And um, the regimen I have in the morning, a lot of people joke around with uh, the 4 a.m. club. And uh, that's uh, it's one of those pieces of, you know, like. I wake up early as heck, 4 a.m., so that I can get my routine going so that by the time my kids wake up at 6 a.m., I'm no longer tethered or bothered. You know, I can get the things done. In that space, at some point in time, I do meditate. I lie down flat on the ground. The ground is at, is flat. And we have amazing, you know, 
there's been so much tied into breathing and posture and how the how our thoughts you know regulate and if you sit there and wake up in the morning this was a ted talk and automatically you grab your phone and you're stuck into the media and the you know media will drive you into a form of negativity automatically my first two hours of the day i don't touch the phone because i'm trying to fill my head with the things that need to be there in order to be that person that people can now drink from my fountain but if i already start in that negative slouch in that uh, oh man 2000 people now dead and i got i got bills to pay and there's not gonna, like you're already starting in this muck my big thing is if you if posture's a big thing to you then get your positive head right and just do for that brief 10 minutes before things start you know get your head into some kind of into your thoughts about what's real to you who you are knowing that you're enough knowing that you're a great coach, source of love, and things are down, but you're gonna get through, breathing that in, feeling that tall posture, and knowing that you're enough, oh my God, it's worth, yeah, it's worth more than money itself. Awesome, so Connor, we probably didn't answer that the way you wanted it answered, <laughs> but, it, but they were pretty solid answers, I ain't hey, gonna lie. Watch down on the floor good. a little bit more, Connor, all right? <laughs> watch everything from on the floor. <laughs> put, put the TV screen up on the roof. <laughs> hey, well, that's a good way to fix your fix some posture. All right, thank you. All right, Greg, do we have uh, we have another question out there? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, Jayish wants to know what's some of the best tips to train people virtually. Man, that's a great question. Hey, Brian, are you doing any of that right now? I am. I am. I, you know, I, I'm 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 on Facetime. You know, for me, uh, I'm still one on one. Uh, sometimes it's, it's semi-private two to three people on one, you know, if, the, if they want to have somebody join on camera. But for me, I've just chosen to do it via FaceTime and, uh, I, it's not the model I'm adopting. I'm not turning into this, oh, I'm now an online coach. There is a big part of me that believes this is going to be temporary. And as the facts show, I'm going to need to be part of the world that really creates human connection. I'm still part of the world that one day there's going to be high fives again and hugs and people who need to be taken out of this rut of addiction, whether it's food or alcohol or whatever, and they're going to need help because their doctor finally says it's either this or you die or someone all of a sudden becomes a father and they need to change. These things are still going to happen in the world and I still need to be that piece. So there you go. Oh, it's awesome. Um, I think one of the things that I'm doing is I, so I have the, the NASM app. I'm not doing any FaceTime, like, um, uh, zoom or Skype or anything like that. Um, I'm, I just don't have that many clients to be honest with you. Um, but I do have a particular client that, um, or a group of clients that I may work with. And so they're on that NASM app and, uh, I, I just provide programs. So you don't have to have the NASM app. You could do something totally different. Uh, you could you could do a uh, email. You can do a Google Shared Drive, and then you can see real time as they check off what it is that they're doing on their end. Um, but you know that's that's one of the things that I utilize, find really helpful. Uh, I put in workouts for every single one of those days and send it out to my guys as soon as I upload it. It's populated, and they have the workouts there for them. So. Uh, Amen to that. You think this was a conversation cast with uh, with Karen and McMahon, where she was saying that you can do two things. One is one on one virtual training, like the same way that you did with your workouts, but you are now face to face on a screen. And then she does uh, a population of a Google Doc so that you can see and she can see what it is, and she'll put the reps in, and you see it kind of pop up real time. Um, yeah. And that's a system that she had put together. So if you want more information on that, check out that episode of the, the NASM CPT podcast. Um, but I think there are a lot of options out there and then trying to figure out what does that mean? Can I, can I do charge clients for, for workouts like a weekly or monthly workouts? Can I charge clients for these one-on-one -on -one virtual trainings? Can I, um, a lot of people in New York are doing this, the friends that I have here and they'll do free workouts on Instagram. And then they ask for donations. So I'm giving this out for free, but here's my Venmo handle or whatever. If you want to send a few bucks my way, uh, I can keep them coming. So there are a lot of options there. I hope that helps. I, 
Rick, you know, uh, Disney Plus is running all the time, and we just recently watched Ratatouille. And yeah. uh, it's in there that, you know, th- for those of you guys that coaches out there that haven't watched Ratatouille, uh, I highly recommend that you do. Um, but, you know, all chefs know this too well. It's like if they're for if you're a real chef, there will always be, you know, food. There will always be food for those who love to cook and people who want to eat that food. And it's the same way with coaching. There's always going to be people who need coaching and there's always going to be need to be you know coaches cooks in that kitchen and if you really embrace that you know and know that you have that art to help people it remember what people are searching and really thriving for in when they don't know what to do it is feedback okay and as many online programs as there are and and you can say all of a sudden like oh i'm now thrown into an online world and that's just not my thing and I can't compete with these apps and this, and then all of a sudden feeling like you're gonna lose clients. I've, I'm there, I'm with you guys. But when I remind myself the real story, the real story is I have over 20 years of experience in this industry. I love this industry. And the thing that my most authentic thing that I can give people is my feedback as an expert in this field. And if you can give your good, authentic, wholehearted feedback to people, whether that is maybe reviewing a video that they did or just a little feedback, hey, this is what I did for my workout. And then you give them a little, hey, that is amazing. Even that, a little heads up, high five and an email back, that's great. Reaching out to your clients that you haven't seen or even people who you haven't, who just popped up in your head, hey, I'm gonna talk to some family. These are all approaches to doing what are still in our heart, right? Still helping and still being there for other people. Oh, I want to I want to speak to that real quick. So um, this is also a time in this this question about positivity and how are we doing that. Um, there are a couple of things. One is there's a former client of mine. He no longer trains. Uh, he's I think he's 88 years old, and uh, and he's in New York City and he lives by himself. So he's got nobody that's around him. So what I did is I gathered all the uh, all three of my kids on the on the couch. And I just said, hey, can you look into the camera and everybody say, hey, Joel, I hope you're doing OK. Right. And they wave and I'd zoom in on the on the kid's face one by one as they're kind of like, why is he zooming in on me right now? We we said what we were supposed to say. Um, and and it was just something that was greatly appreciated by this guy. And it wasn't you know, we didn't show up at his house, but it was something out of the blue that the guy received. Uh, and he was so grateful for it. And another example is when I first moved to New York. You know, when I first started personal training, when I was a baroque, baroque, there was so many syllables in the word broke because that's how broke I was. I had to break up the word. And and we had, had roommates, my friends from Alabama that moved to New York with me and we were or at different times, but we were friends back home. Yeah. And we all lived together. It was four guys. We had a three bedroom uh, apartment and it was it was a great experience and now we're on a on a text chain together and we all have our own lives and, and our own things going on and we don't talk very often and everybody on that feed has reached out to me individually and said why have we not done this in so long and i think just being here in this moment and rekindling these friendships and you know these shared experiences so we're we're going to play we used to sit around and play make fun of each other for all words they'd make up that we later would find out when we looked it up are actually real. By the way, did you know corn is a word? Anyway, uh, <laughs> so we're going to play boggle tonight. We're playing boggle tonight. You know, hey, these, these are the times where we have to look at what's real and what's valuable and, and reach out because people, people are there. Yes. People are there, so reach out. So, hey, Greg, do you have uh, one more question, maybe? Yeah, uh, yeah I've got. How, and and also, we're we're running at about thirty minutes right now. I don't want to overwhelm <laughs> anything, but uh, yeah. uh, you just give me the heads up, a little nod, or <laughs> or write it down on a piece of paper and put it up in the camera, Greg, and let me know to stop talking. Uh, oh, it's it's always a challenge to get you stop talking, Rick. But I'll, <laughs> I'll do my best. So, uh, Josh in the chat wants to know: Is there any advice on nutrition coaching? or nutrition during this time that you guys have? Brian, you want to take this one first? 
Yes. Uh, uh, so nutrition coaching, this is a, uh, this has been a hot topic um, in for my clients as well, just because of the access to, you know, the food, the prepping and all that stuff. Um, it is, uh, and everybody's going, they're, they're diving into more, you know, whether they're getting food delivery service or they're getting, this is just a, uh, I, I, I don't know how to control it. And because it, one second, how can I give advice? You know, I'm, I'm 24 seven in my, in my cabinet right now, eating snacks away. Uh, but I think it's, here we go. Nutritional advice. It's, I would dive into the whole thing that we've been talking about already. We're being forced to go and ask ourselves, why are we doing the things we want to do in the first place? What is it? What does your nutritional plan, what is it trying to get you to? Is it just trying to, are you just trying to maintain? Are you trying to eat? Like deciding what the plan is about first is the, is one of the biggest things is, is what is it you want? You know, I, 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 everybody knows how to eat clean. Yeah, I, eight cups of water. They all know that. Or, or I mean, it, you know, 10 ounces for every, all the stuff that I should be speaking about. But, you know, broccoli. There you go. Everybody knows they should be eating broccoli, right? But we're sitting here like, hey, what's the, what, what energy thing should I be? Like, guys, let's get down and let's start cooking some real meals. How about that for nutritional advice? Let's start coming together as a family and prepping. I got my family right now cooking and prepping and cleaning together just, and it's a mess. It is, there is no order to it. It is messy. My girl got cut on her finger the other day. It's crappy, but it's, but it's beautiful in the mess, right? And if I was to give anybody nutritional advice, how about do things to get you closer, do, share recipes, you it, do recipes together instigate things that bring you closer even though you're separate how about that during this uh, during this web, this episode okay that's my advice well i will uh i'll say this just personally for me this is this is where i am um and <laughs> that's, uh, lesson one the structure and function of alcohol that's chapter nine on the the certified nutrition uh, coaching specialty that we have at NASM. So I just happen to be on the alcohol chapter. It's not that I'm sitting around reading about alcohol right now. Uh, and, and I will say this is that's a challenge for a lot of people at the moment too. Um, you know, the sitting around with with access maybe to food, access maybe to alcohol, and and taking advantage of those things more often than you would normally. I know I have because uh, it's really challenging to. I, it's just the work is different, right? So being at home is challenging. So uh, a couple of things that I'm doing. One is uh, I'm learning more about nutrition, and and I feel that's just not a core competency for me. And and I do kind of what you said, Brian, where I you know I'll talk to my clients, and I'm like, you know, for the most part, what you should or should not be eating, um, and it's the convenience of access that that creates those challenges, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if it's in the house, you're going to grab it, and um, uh, my my thing has always been if if you're hungry enough to eat a carrot, uh, eat a carrot, and uh, and if you're not hungry enough to eat a carrot, then don't have junk, right? Like you just have to find something that that's good for you, but maybe not delicious. Then you'll really know whether or not you're hungry, or whether or not that's a a mental cognitive challenge that, that you just have to, you right. overcome. You have to, you have to practice, and and it is a practice. Everything that we're doing, we're talking about right now, is a practice. So I'm not saying that you're not disciplined enough to do it. That's not what I'm saying. Discipline mm -hmm. and food, it's an addiction like many other things. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a challenge that uh, we have to to build strength in. And right now, it's like lifting light weights because we don't have the strength to lift heavy weights. And we yeah. can be so embarrassed, or we can be so defeated by our weakness that we give in to our weakness rather than than working on building strength. Um, and then you might say to yourself, well, I know if I say no right now in, in an hour, I'm going to say yes anyway. So I might as well go ahead and eat it now. Um, that's not a that's not a practice of strength. Yeah. Um, if, if you fail in an hour, fail in an hour, but don't fail right now. You know, be, yeah. be as strong as you can in the moment. Uh, and that that's your challenge. That's your challenge right now. And 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 I invite you. Um, I, I challenge you 
to to do the same the people that are listening to to understand that and and again if if you quote fail um that the last thing you need to be doing is really beating up yourself but it's identifying maybe what are some of those roadblocks what are some of the things that are getting in the way check your hydration levels check some of the things that 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 build into your cravings and you already mentioned journaling brian so uh journaling your food uh food journals are incredibly valuable in helping to identify some of these things and what might spike some of the cravings that we have um and and i know because i i'm i'm type 2 diabetic and uh, i have craving and sometimes i give in to them um like anybody and everybody but i'll give in to them because i I think to myself i'm never going to be able to have this again yeah. And, and in my mind, because I can never have it, it is it is the forbidden fruit. And then at some point I'm like, no, I have to have it. Ah. Um, and I've got to be really aware and very careful of that and, and plan my day. And I think that's a that's a value that we have to look at. What is the planning process and planning maybe in advance what and when you're going to eat instead of just kind of, you know, here I, I feel like this. Um, planning it out. And that could be, that's a challenge for people, but the challenge to take the time to write it out and then take a few days and, and stick to it. Don't, don't do it for the week. Don't do it for the, the entirety of the COVID-19 shutdown. Do it for three days and say, yeah. hey, here's my challenge. I'm going to put myself on this, challenge myself for three days, and then give me the fourth day where you can just do whatever you're going to do. But but at least you've rehearsed the discipline for yourself. Hey, hey guys, I'm going to let my uh, marketing side show here a little bit so you know, uh, and, and everybody watching, uh, we will have a new video series on the NASM YouTube uh, page coming up this week from Brad Dieter, who was involved in the uh, nutrition certification. Uh, so you can kind of learn about that as well well as we have some guides to eating healthy during this time at home at blog.nasm.org. So you can check that out uh, as well. And uh, feel free to uh, also uh, join Rick in his journey in the CNC course as uh, playing a great nutrition stuff there as well. Yeah, awesome. thank, you, thank you for that. And uh, Brad Dieter would definitely be the professional to listen to on this rather than us two chuckleheads over here. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll let PhD Brad uh, take that one. Um, hey, hey, um, let me go with uh, Greg. Do we do we want to address anything else, or should we start to to wrap it up? I think we I think we can wrap it up. You guys hit on uh, how to train from home, which was a big uh, a big topic, and I know a lot of people were wondering how you guys were doing it. So thanks for sharing, uh, Rick, that you're using the NASM app, and and Brian that you're you're utilizing FaceTime. I think those are valuable. So I think uh, I think we're good here, guys. Awesome. Well, hey, Brian, let me just say this to you. Um, There's a quote that Socrates had, and it said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is a habit. And uh, you've made an absolute habit of being one of the most excellent people I've ever come across, man. And your positivity and your life shines. And I want to say how grateful I am that, that you're in my life. And hopefully a lot more people through this, uh, this platform was, were able to be exposed to, to that light as well. And, uh, and, and you can help to, to energize them with your power. Hey, I'm so grateful for the time, Rick. And I just want to reflect that back to you, my brother. I say I think it's absolutely a... Um, it feels good and right to be kind, right? And they say that, you know, when you're kind and you work hard, you know, good things will happen. And I think even under the circumstances, it's still it's more, much more important than ever to be kind and work hard spreading that kindness. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for thinking about me in this topic. Uh, it really means the world to me. And to all you guys out there, all my brothers and sister coaches out there, you know, keep digging down deep into your own and be true to yourself first and know that you know once you remember that you are the center of everything that's happening and you be true to yourself and kind to yourself man uh you'll go out there and and no matter what you're going to change lives and continue to do it all right so that's at the heart of who we are that's awesome brother thank you so much and i want to say thank you to everybody that have been here and whether or not you just kind of pop in and pop back out or you stuck around for the whole thing Thank you for dialing into this uh, this NASM Facebook Live Thanks. account and uh, and checking us out. If we didn't get to your questions, uh, apologize, but we will be doing these more often. So we hope to see you again. Awesome.